Arborist Exam Prep, Chapter 3, Soil Science. So trees and soils depend on each other in an essential relationship. However, urban development can disrupt this ecological balance, causing stress to trees. In fact, many cases of tree decline are the result of problems below ground, making it crucial to understand soil science. As arborists, we need to be familiar with the three main aspects of soil, physical, chemical, and biological properties. Physical properties involve how soil minerals are arranged, how water moves through the soil, and the texture of the soil. The mineral composition of the soil, like sand, silt, and clay, determine how well the soil can support plant growth. And the chemical properties include factors like soil acidity, pH, salinity, and the nutrients that are available. We'll also discuss how certain chemicals of impact nutrient availability in the health of trees. Okay, so then we have biological properties, and this refers to the living organisms in the soil like fungi, bacteria, and earthworms, nematodes, all kinds of stuff. There is tons, billions of living organisms in the soil. These organisms play a critical role in supporting tree health by breaking down organic matter and releasing nutrients. So how soil formed? Well, I'm glad you asked. Soil formation is influenced by the parent material, which could be weathered rock or sediment from ancient seas. Over time, this material breaks down into layers called soil horizons. There are five main soil horizons. You have the O, A, E, B, and C. The O is at the very top, and this is made of organic matter like decaying leaves. The A horizon, this is where most of the fine roots grow and where soil is uh, really active. The E horizon is lighter in color and often missing. The B horizon is a zone where uh, materials accumulate. This is where everything gets leached down to. The C horizon is the deepest composed of partially weathered parent material. So the organic matter in the soil, the role of it is uh, it shrinks and swells with moisture and it forms pore space, which helps with uh, the roots and they're able to breathe. Dead plants and animal materials make up organic matter. It helps bind soil particles and it improves soil structure. And it's a food, soil, food source for soil organisms. All right, let's talk about soil texture. Soil is made up of sand, silt, and clay in varying proportions. A balanced mix of these three creates loam, which is ideal for plant growth. The spaces between soil particles is called macropores and micropores, and they allow air and water to move through the soil. Macropores are the larger spaces. They allow water to drain and air to fill the gaps. Micropores, on the other hand, hold water that plants can access during dry periods. So macropores are the big spaces, micro are the small spaces. In this triangle here, this pyramid, um, this shows you the percentage. If you have a percentage of sand, silt, and clay, you can see what your overall soil texture is. So for example, you take a mason jar and you fill it with the, with the soil in your backyard and water. Let it settle for a couple days and you'll see a layer of sand. You'll see a layer of silt and you'll see a layer of clay. They kind of separate themselves. And then you can uh, guesstimate your percentage. By that, how much of, of each one has taken up that space. And then you go to your percentages on this triangle. So you have your percent sand at the bottom, percent silt, percent clay. Put them all together and you're going to see what the overall texture of your soil is. And this is why that is important, micropores and macropores. Soil compaction reduces pore space, which restricts root growth. This limits water infiltration and affects the movements of gases like oxygen and carbon dioxide. Wet soils and clay soils are especially prone to compaction. All right, it's time to talk soil pH, which measures the acidity or alkalinity. A pH of 7 is neutral, below a 7 is acidic, and above 7 is alkaline. So you have 0 to 14 on the scale. Right in the middle is 7. That's going to be neutral. Anything above that is going to be basic or alkaline. Anything below that is going to be acidic. If soil pH is too high, we can add sulfur to lower it. And if it's too low, lime can be added to raise it. 
But some soils, especially those with high clay or organic matter content, have a high buffering capacity, making it resistant to pH changes. This little chart here shows which uh, nutrients are available and what pH. It's actually only half the picture, so you want to look at this in the, in the ISA Certified Arborist Study Guide as a great picture of it. But you can see most of the trees are going to get most benefit right in the middle. That's where it's fattest. And the lower you go, the pointier it gets, which means those nutrients become either toxic or unavailable. Toxic means that they had too much or too, too little it is a nutrient deficiency. Cation exchange capacity, or CEC, is a measure of how well the soil can hold on and exchange nutrients. Clay soils have a higher CEC, which means they can hold more nutrients, while sandy soils tend to lose nutrients through leaching. So if excess salts accumulate, then you have a, what's called saline soil. This is a excess levels of soluble salt. This typically has a neutral to slightly acidic pH. And rem remediation strategy would be to focus on removing the excess salts with, by leaching with fresh water. And sodic soils, this is a sodium cations occupy an unusually high percentage of cation exchange capacity. This has a tendency to crust. You see real crusted soil, and it impacts its structure. Um, issues associated with this include high pH. Usually you see this when soils are above 8.5, and that makes the soil super alkaline. Nutrient deficiency and sometimes toxic levels of sodium show up. Remediation strategies for this would be to replace the sodium with calcium using amendments like gypsum. And then you want to improve soil structure and drainage. So with saline soils we talked about, we want to leach out the soil. You try to get the saline salts out. Sodic soils, we have to actually replace it. With, and this is done with, with gypsum. Okay, now we'll talk about the biological properties of the soil. Remember we had the chemical, we had the physical, and now we have biological properties. Soil contains billions of organisms, including insects, fungi, bacteria, and even small mammals. These organisms form a soil web, playing vital roles in breaking down organic matter and recycling nutrients. And the rhizosphere is the area around plant roots where biological activity is intense. So the root cap actually kind of disintegrates and produces root exudates like sugars, and they're released in this area and they serve as food for soil organisms. And this is, like we talked about, I would say, soil horizon A is where all the activity, all the active roots are. Mycorrhizae are specialized fungi that form a symbiotic relationship with the tree root. In exchange for sugars from the plant, these fungi help the tree absorb water and nutrients, especially phosphorus. Nutrient cycling is essential for healthy soils, Plants or plant parts die and decompose, and then they return the nutrients to the soil. These nutrients are broken down by soil organisms and made available again to the plant roots. Soil water is held in micropores, that's the small ones, right? As capillary water, which is available to plants. When water drains from macropores, that's the large pores, the soil reaches fill capacity, meaning it's holding as much water as possible without becoming waterlogged. If plants don't get enough water, they can experience stress or even die. And this is how that would happen. So it's called permanent wilting point. When available water is depleted, plants experience water stress. When water stress is prolonged and severe, plants may reach permanent wilting point and will not be able to recover. So remember when we were talking about compaction, we were talking about how the roots need air. Um, so gas exchange in the soil is super important. Trees require oxygen, and they also give off carbon dioxide. For roots to survive, gas exchange between the soil and the atmosphere must occur. If insufficient exchange in oxygen, deficit may occur. Organic amendments improve soil structure, water retention, and nutrient availability. A good compost with the proper carbon and nitrogen ratio can enrich the soil and reduce the need for chemical fertilizers. And finally, mulching reduces surface compaction, conserves moisture, and keeps soil temperatures steady. 
All right, that pretty much covers Soil Science Chapter 3. Thank you again so much for watching. Please like and subscribe and stay tuned for the next one.